Jeremiah chapter 23. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor, Israel, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, all right, the context, the doctrinal statement is Israel. John chapter 10, the sheep are Israel. The shepherd is Jesus Christ. Against the pastors that feed my people, Israel, ye have scattered my flock, Israel, and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. Now, run over to John chapter 10. We're not going to do this chapter one night. John chapter 10. To the Jews. I know John was, the, was the, the, the gospel written much later. But it's recorded Jesus is alive before his crucifixion. Very way I say unto you, verse 1. He that enters not by the door unto the sheepfold, Israel. But climbeth some other way, the same is the thief and a robber. But he that can't. Entereth by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Israel. To him the porter opens the sheep, hears his voice, and he calls his sheep by name. And leads them out. And when he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, and they know his voice. So, uh, verse 10, he says, I am the door of the sheep. Verse 8. All that came before me were thieves and robbers. Pay attention to what we're reading in Jeremiah 23. But the sheep did not hear them. Verse 9, I am the door. And find pasture, verse 9, Jeremiah 23. Uh, verse 10, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. Jeremiah 23. Verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and am known of mine. Israel. And look at verse 16. John 10, 16. Other sheep I have which are not of this fold. There's the Christian. There he is. Primarily the sheep are listed as Israel. Now back to Jeremiah 23, 1 and 2. Doctrinally, it's written to the nation of Israel. Now the spiritual application to the church is there are pastors in churches that the sheep lead. The sheep are caused to be left. And the pastor does not go out and find out or learn the reason why the sheep had left. I've heard two pastors in my lifetime. Well, you know, I'm too busy to go after every sheep and they don't want to hear from me. They don't want to talk to me. I, had, I was, wasn't newly saved. When I started going to this church, after we'd left our first church, and we've been going to this church for a while, and this visiting click family, later on about they were a click family, and the congregation raised their hands. So me and my wife, we raised our hand, and the pastor looked at me, he said, you're not a member of this church. So we left the church. I'm not a member of the church. We left. And we were out of the church for a while looking for other churches. That pastor never called on us. So finally, we decided, after a long time going to other different churches, and all, we decided to go back, and the pastor's response was, well, I thought you fell off the earth. I said, well, explain something to me. What was it that we were here last time we were here, you told me and my wife we, were, we weren't members of the church. 
you weren't voted in. Excuse me, Pastor. Why should I be voted into a church when I received Jesus Christ as my Savior? I was put into the body. I was adopted. My name was put down in the Lamb's Book of Life. The Holy Spirit dwelled in me. Now i got to be adopted to the church by voting? Where were you to come after me to, to help me? Well, you know, you just left and all that. You didn't want to come searching for us? You, we fell off the earth? Is that your attitude? And that's a lot of the attitudes of the chat. They leave, there's a misunderstanding, and they, they pat, well, you know, I'm going to go try to find new people so we can count the heads of the new people. I mean, it, it's a shame that there, there are Christians who have fallen away for whatever reason, and the pastors of the churches don't care. They want to worry about numbers and great numbers. And the church is not about numbers. If there's a shepherd in the church and a sheep that has left, a sheep that has been injured, a sheep that needs care for, it is your job as the pastor to go. You're the pastor. You're the pastor. That's what your name is. You go after the sheep. You know, and, you know, you go knock on the door and they blow you off. And Okay, that's part of the job. Letter, phone call. They're too busy trying to get new sheep. But isn't there, in the Gospel of Luke, isn't there a parable by Jesus that were 99 and one sheep left the flock? And that shepherd left the 99 and went looking for that one sheep that was wounded, astray, and needed help. I see too many churches, they're too busy. You know, yeah, they're door knocking. Yeah, they're doing, but they want new people and they don't care about the old people. And I've had a couple of churches that go, listen, I'm not a gossip or anything like that. I have a prayer list. These people are in my prayer. Uh, Pastor, what happened to this family? What happened to this person? They don't come to church no more. Why don't you know? You know, you and I, Pastor, close enough, you know I'm not here for gossiping. You know I, I pray. You know I'm a prayer. I just, you know what, are they okay? That's what I'm asking. Are they okay? And you, you get a mumble, you know. Why did they fall away? Did you go and visit them? Have you called them on the phone? Have you wrote them a letter? Have you tried to see where the misunderstanding is? Because if there's a misunderstanding, that sheep is not, that person is not going to come up. Hey, you know, we had a problem. Though we should. A lot of times there's misunderstanding. I, hey, you're not a member of this church. So what else was I supposed to do? All right, don't come back to church. And a pastor would call us and say, I haven't seen you guys in church. Well, uh, you told us not to come back, so we didn't come back. What, what do you mean? It didn't tell you, what do you mean? It didn't tell you to come back. I, you said I wasn't a member of the church. So I'm not a member. I'm not coming. Oh, oh, oh wait a minute. Oh, okay. Let me explain myself. No, you fell off the earth. Well, it's not an answer. And then you make excuses or you make rumors about the. I will gather the redmen. This is Israel, verse three, of my flock, out of all countries, whether I driven them. Now, that's also Second Advent. Second Advent is all all over the world. Now, where we are, they'll be in Babylon. They'll be in Eden. They will be in Moab. They will be in Turkey. But even the book of Acts, they're all over. The book in Acts chapter 2, all that names were names of places where the Jews are. I have driven them. God had driven them away. In rebellion and in sin, God dwelled them away. I will bring them again to their folds. The fold is... For Israel is the land is divided into 12 divisions of the 12 tribes of Israel 
except the uh, Levi. And they shall be fruitful increase in the land. I will set up shepherds, plural, over them, which shall feed them. There are shepherds, there are pastors today that don't feed the sheep. I can think of one church right now, and many churches, many churches. On Sunday morning, the sheep get goat food. The goat food is the unsaved. And every Sunday morning, you know, you know, Jesus Christ died for your sin and be saved. Come up to the altar and get saved. Jesus Christ died for your sin. Come up to the altar and be saved. All right, we have a Mother's Day message. And then, you know, come up to the altar and be, and be saved, be saved, be saved, be saved, be saved. That doesn't help the sheep that are already saved. That salvation message, and I've heard, I haven't been in churches, but I heard the pastors in churches, well, you know, it's for those that come that, don't are not saved church is not the place for the unsaved the church by definition is not the building it's the assembly of the body of christ that is born again you're supposed to feed them and they're starving they don't know the basic simple doctrines that they should know they're still on milk They shall fear no more, that's the millennium, nor be, be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, that's the millennium, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, I will raise unto David. Now God just said in the previous chapter, that's it, I'm done with the king. Kaniah, that's it, no more of his children. Great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren, great-great-great-grandchildren. No more of his children are going to sit on the throne of David. Now God brings up David. I will raise up on David a righteous branch, capital B. I think it's Zephaniah speaks about that branch. Zephaniah or Zechariah. A king, capital K. When you see those words with capitalization, that's the Lord Jesus Christ shall reign and prosper okay there's a virgin birth <coughs> how can how can jesus christ the seed of david be on the throne of david when the previous chapter god said about can i uh, no more of your children it's the virgin birth that kingly line of men of Adam is done. But the virgin birth of the man, God, Jesus Christ, a miracle, is not done. And he will be the last king ever. There's no king in Israel today. And there hasn't been a king in Israel since Kaniah. And Jesus Christ is not king today. He's not. He's up in heaven as our priest, offering up prayers to God for us. He was a prophet when he was alive, saying, hey, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. This is going to... That office is closed now. He's done his speaking. And execute judgment, millennium, and justice in the earth, millennium. Now, Jesus Christ, the king, did not come back there in Nehemiah and Ezra. There was no king in Ezra and Nehemiah. So that's, that's, that shows you that's not the Ezra and Nehemiah return. In his days, Judah shall be saved, millennium. God will give them a new heart. God will forgive their iniquity. Now let me ask you, how can churches and religions preach that God is all through with the Jew when you read a statement like that? 
You know what Jehovah Witnesses do when they run around saying they're Jehovah Witnesses? Though there's 144,000, they are of the tribe of Israel. God's all finished with Israel. We're the spiritual Israel. We're the spiritualized Jew. Because God's all finished with Jew. Replacement theology. The church is the spiritual Israel. And when you look at the nation of, it, uh, the nation of America, and the, the, the America is that new light on the shiny hill. The pilgrims with the black hats and the congregational church and the morons over in Utah. Look at the names of the cities of the early America and you will find the name of the biblical names of the city. You say, well, we were a Christian nation. No, you weren't. You were a nation trying to steal from God in Israel. And that the fact is, when the congregational church beat separatists, they were your Baptists before they were Baptists. They were Bible-believing, saved Christians. When they confiscated their land and they beat them and they killed them and they 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 removed them out of the land, congregational church. Because we're building a kingdom of priests and people, and then Jesus Christ will come and be pat us on the back and how well we're doing. Or maybe in G or all the millennium that Jesus Christ ain't going to come back at all. We're just going to keep on getting better and better and better. That's the pre-tribulation. That's the post-tribulation. And that's the, I mean, the pre-millennial, post-millennial, and the odd millennium. Pre is Jesus Christ will come and build a thousand year reign with the nation of Israel. Post means Man and religion and church and Catholic and Jehovah Witness and morons and the congregation, they're going to build a, a kingdom and everything's going to be hunky dory. We're going to make things greater and brighter. We're going to have Republican government and all that. And then Jesus Christ will come. And then all millennial, no Jesus Christ, no thousand years. In this day, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. Millennium. You know where that child's walking down the street with a lion and a bear on a leash? And the children are going to put their hole in a cockatence den and they're not going to get bit? You just had a guy last week get bitten dead, almost deadly by a shark off California. You had a guy had to shoot a bear. The bear broke in his house and attacked the guy. The animals are going crazy. Dale and Swell safely? There's missiles going on right now in Israel. You got people in America shooting each other with the Jews in America. And this is the name whereby he shall be called. The Lord our righteousness. Revelation 19 says there's a name that nobody knows about Jesus. That's another name. We're going to have Jesus in, in, in the millennium. The Lord our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that there shall no more say the Lord liveth, which brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. History. Exodus. I mean, that's, that's what the whole testament has been. The Lord that brought the children out of Egypt. The Lord that brought the children of Israel. The, the, the Lord brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. That's old. He did. But the Lord liveth which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country. That would be Babylon. Ezra and Nehemiah. And from all countries, whether I have driven them, that's the millennium, and they shall dwell in their own land. Now the Catholics say that land is their land. America says about her land, this is my land, this is your land. Not if God said, I'll have another nation come in and conquer you. Adolf Hitler tried to conquer the world in his land. God said, done with you. Alexander the Great tried to conquer the world for his land. God said, I'm done with you. 
Roman Empire tried to build land. God says, I'm done with you. King is gone. I'm going to build up my land. God says, I'm done with you. The nation of Israel is going to build in their land, settle in their land, and they're not going to come out of that land. They'll get the new, new earth, I believe. You say, well, heaven and earth will pass away, but they get something better. You find somebody who says that God's all done with Israel, step away from them. My heart within me is broken because of the prophets. I don't know if this is all my bones shake. Jeremiah, I am like a drunken man. I'm like a man whose wine has overcome because the Lord, Jeremiah, because the words of his holiness. Jeremiah said, I have I am so dumbfounded. I am so awe at the word of God. I feel intoxicated. I had no control over my body. And the thing is, Jeremiah knows the sins of the people. He's living there. He's got everybody around him, including his family, his hometown. Everybody's against him, and they want him to shut up, and they want him dead. Jeremiah is a priest, and he's looking at the people, and he's listening to God like, I just can't believe it. And there are Christians today who are living right, and they look at the world, and they look at the church, and they look at the condition. I can't believe it. Why are these churches failing when it is so obvious that what they're doing is a sin and has nothing to do with God and the Bible? Now, like I said, last week was, was Father's Day. You know, call no man your father. Okay, maybe I'm stretching it a little bit. It is a religious title. But why are we honoring a mother or a father in the year? And how many messages on Father's Day was there about Father God? Slim and few. You know, there's a passage in the Bible where God is spoken as a mother. Was that passage used on Mother's Day? I doubt it. And you got to look around and say, in the, in, in the last scene church age that we are, the, and it's not individual, it's a group of people, the church, God said you'd be, oh, how great I am, how wonderful we are. We got such a big work. And God said, you make us sick. You're vile, you're wicked. The land is full of adulterers. That's America. For be because of swearing the land more. That swearing is not cussing. They're making oath. I'll, I'll promise to do this. I promise to do that. I'll sign my name here. I'll sign my name there. And probably to false gods too. You swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth and they lie through their teeth. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up. No light. Their course is evil, and their force is not right. So the force be with you is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane. There are false prophets, there are false priests. And there are prophets and priests, I would assume also Levitical, they're profane. We've already dealt with two priests in 22 and 21. And they were profane. Yea, in my house, that's the temple, I have found their wickedness. Oh, there you go. There's a, 
We, we like to welcome to you the house of the Lord. Yeah, the house of the Lord is wickedness. In church houses today, there are vile wickedness going on. There you go. Oh, oh no, that's not us. Oh, but you got the Lord's house? Yeah, there it is. Saith the Lord. There are things going on in the churches behind closed doors that people don't know. And God says, that's wicked. Wherefore their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in darkness. Icy, watery, muddy. They shall be driven on and fall therein. Get injured by falls. For I will bring evil upon them, God speaking. Even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. You know, they say, you know, we got a visitation. Visitation is not really a good word found in the Bible. Usually the visitation in the Bible is it got a condemnation with it. There's a couple there's places where it's good. God says, if you don't properly attain to what the Lord's Supper is, sickness, death. I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. That's the half breed. They've already gone into captivity. They prophesied in Baal. Oh, come on, we will never do that. Uh, do you bring Esther into your church? Do you bring heroes? Do you bring in Tammuz? How about this? How about this? Paul says there, there's another Jesus. Do you bring another Jesus into your church that's not the Jesus of the Bible? Could it be Jesus, 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 and you're worshiping another Jesus? How about this? Well, we're going to celebrate Jesus' birthday, but we know it's not Jesus' birthday. We'll do trunk or treat on the devil's birthday. And cause my people Israel to err. Can you apply that to the church age spiritually? Yes. There are things going on in the churches that the people, the Christians, they, and they're saved and they, and they love the Lord, but they're erring because the leadership of that church. Countless churches I've been in. And they're wrong. And what they're doing is wrong. And, well, you know, not every church is perfect. That's true. But we can try to succeed to be right. We can examine what we do as we're to examine our salvation and put away that which is evil. Not accept it. I have seen also the prophets of Jerusalem. A horrible thing. They commit adultery. Pastors do that. Deacons do that. Trustees do that. Ushers do it. PO players do it. Congregation does it. We ought not to be doing it. Oh, not us. Whoso are looking upon a woman and lust after her in his heart has already committed adultery with it. How you doing? Oh, I didn't sleep with her. Uh, okay. So if you can think about it, I, I guess you think about other things that are not sins either, huh? And walk in lies. Well, what do you do when, when a man is behind a pulpit and he's teaching lies? And I've heard it. I've been in those churches. What did God say? It's a horrible thing. It's a horrible thing. A man gets up there and he'll lie to you.
They strengthen the hands of evildoers. <laughs> Those who want to do right, they have nothing to do. They don't help. Them. They don't guide. Them. They don't feed them. And none does return from his wickedness. That's vile. They don't repent. That is the condition of Jerusalem in Jeremiah's time. They are all them as Sodom. And he happens to Gomorrah. I mean, we're in, we're in gay pride month. And all oh, the evils of the Sodom and all oh, the eeds of Sodomy. And your church could be likened as Sodom and Gomorrah. And listen, the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah was pride. Abundance of bread, just evil wickedness, not just sodomy. As a matter of fact, when you look at the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah, when it's listed, it almost matches the sins of the church. How great we are, look at us, and we have no need of nothing. And we'll go knocking on your door, not to have sex with men, but we'll go knocking on door to bring our, our false doctrine to your house, or have you come to... Our church and hear our false doctrine. That's worse than having sex with the same sex. Lies, adultery. There's a man in the Corinthian church sleeping with his father's wife. And the church is like, oh, isn't that nice? You know, it's amazing. You know, God calls our church age the Laodicean church. I always wondered early on, why didn't he call it the Corinthian church age? I know why. Because the Corinthian church repented and got right. And God said, you did. I mean, Paul, through God said, you did. It's a good thing. That man repented of that sin and, and the church helped that guy out. That's not the Laodicean church age. They're not repenting. Heck, many of the churches have rainbows and the women and all that other nonsense. They defile the word of God. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets. False prophets. We got false prophets today. They date the rapture when God, Jesus Christ said, no one knows the date and time, but I do. They go around knocking on your door with, with false prophets, literature and, and information, and we're at 144,000, you liar. I've been Daytona Beach almost six, seven, maybe eight years. I've had more Jehovah Witnesses knock on my door and no Baptists. No Baptist literature left behind when, when I haven't been home. I've had, I've had the Jehovah Witness literature stuck in my door. I got Jehovah Witnesses that write me because they can't come to the door with COVID-19. Nothing from the Baptist churches. Where my grandma's house where I grew up as a little boy, it was a good, there was a big Baptist church down the road. 10, 15 miles maybe. Never once have they ever come up. Listen, I, as far as I know, I was 18 years old before I ever heard the gospel, ever saw a gospel track, ever had anybody try to tell me about Jesus Christ. 18 years old. In New London, Connecticut and all that, in Groton, Connecticut, it's not really a major city, but it's a big enough city for someone trying to bring you to God. No one did. That's why I'm out preaching. That's why I leave gospel track. That's why I, because it took me 18 years for someone to bring me to gospel. You can let your light shine all you want. I didn't see no light. Therefore, let's say the word, hearken not to the words of the prophets. Oh, wait a minute. Verse 15. As concerning the prophets, behold, I will feed them with wormwood. You see, I got it lifted up. Webster's 1828. It's a bitter, noxious taste. It's used for medicine. Make them drink the water of God. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness. 
going forth in all the land of Israel. There, thus saith the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesies unto you. God says, listen, don't listen to them. I had a man in a pulpit and he lied to me and he taught false doctrine. I left. And I put on Facebook, I disinherit myself from anything to do with that church. It was an anchor that was dragging me underwater. I came up for air and got light. They make you vain, empty, nothing. You get nothing out of it. You know what the number one condition would be? If you're in the church, you come out of that church and you felt nothing. Now, that's one of two reasons. Your church is nothing. Or you are not. Your church needs to repent. Or you need to repent. You know. Week after week after week. That message didn't do anything for me. Now that message was. Goat food. Of course you ain't going to get nothing. You need to find a new church. But if you are cold to God. And you are cold to the word of God. And you don't read. And you don't pray. And you don't study. All right, it's not your church. It's you. But if you if you got a church where it's the same thing week after week after week after week after week, and even the pastor pulls out old messages, blows off the dust, and preaches it again, they speak a vision of their own heart, not God. I'll tell you one of the aspects of that church is okay open your book to Malachi we're gonna we're gonna preach to you why you should tithe you know what it's telling me and then the pastor will get you know we ought to have faith we all have you don't have faith in God you gotta preach to them to bring the tithing you're getting worried about your pocketbook time to bring out that old message and see it's under was that for T for tithing or M for Malachi but remember we're not under the law <laughs> why are we going to Malachi Not out of the mouth of the Lord. There are churches out there with the pastors, and the message has nothing to do with the Lord. The work is not of God. Second Corinthians eleven says that there is a there are ministers are ministers of Satan. Jeremiah twenty three sixteen says there are ministers. They do it for even Satan's not in it. That man has put himself in the ministry. Or that man has so defiled himself that God has left him. And it's only him that's in the ministry. This is either of God, it's of the devil, or it's of man. You can't have two and you can't have three. And if that man in the ministry, that that preacher, that, that pastor, your church, if he's not of God, he's either of the devil or he's of himself. Satan is trying to deceive the people to thinking they're right when they're not. And that man, he's doing it for his own income. I've heard many preachers, oh, you know, this, I, I'll just go get myself a job. And shut up and do it. We don't need to hear that. They say still unto them that despise me. The Lord has said. Thus saith the Lord. The Lord told me. The Lord spoke to me. The Lord laid this message on my heart. Kind of funny. One of the, one of the things that the Lord laid me on this message. That message sounded like you did it last year. What God does reruns? He shall have peace. Do you know what the end of Jeremiah is? 
He shall have prosperity. Everything will be great and wonderful. Life is wonderful with Jesus. There'll be no sickness, no problems, no ailments, no troubles like that if you do right and give money to our church. If you volunteer for any... Oh, we volunteer for... We got a bus ministry. We need people to, to clean the grass. We need people to wipe the windows. We need people to do things in the church. Hey, we're going to have the birthday for Jesus. You bring presents to Jesus through the church. Copy of paper, garbage bags and all that. Like Jesus really needs copy of paper. Well, he needs it for the church. Wait a minute. Doesn't the church give you money? Do you have money in the budget to get those things? You don't have in the budget toilet paper? Oh, yeah. And if people bring toilet paper on the birthday of Jesus, where's the money that usually for the toilet paper go? Uh, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, not God's heart, not even the devil's heart. We're going to do this in church. It has nothing to do with God. Like I said, I was in a church one time. They would have fellowship right after the right after the, the Sunday morning service. There'll be more people at the fellowship than there was a church at no evening service. Oh, we feed the flesh, but we're not going to feed the body. Right. That guy was so lame, I was told, and this is what I'm told. Let me tell you, this is what I was told. I wasn't there for it. That guy has spent five to six years doing the Bible study on Pilgrim Progress and just spent ancient amount of time on uh, the women, hope, uh, charity. He had nothing else better to do. And that's his personal. No evil shall come upon you. You see that prosperity? Healers say that. Well, you know, the reason why you didn't get, you get healed is because you didn't have enough faith. There are religions out there that say, you know, if you're sick, it's because you lack faith. liars. Paul had the greatest faith of anybody. He was sick his entire life. And he said, God, heal me. The guy carried a medical doctor. For who has stood in the counsel of the Lord? You better ask yourself that question when you're looking for a church. Is that the counsel of the Lord? Or is it the counsel of Satan? Or is it the counsel of that man? You say, well, how do I know? Check them out with the King James Bible. I had a preacher, you know, the blood, the blood that Jesus has in Revelation 19 is his own blood. I read last night my own personal reading of the book of Psalms. He says, he shall trample the blood of his enemy. You're wrong. It's the blood of his enemy. Goodbye. I sat behind another pastor. And just, you know, do my prophets no harm. And, and who you have to get my permission to even think about having a church. Goodbye. Who do you think you are? And I perceived and heard his word. You better find out what word that man has. It better not have been messages from a year, two, and three years ago. It better not be someone else's message. It better not be a message he got online. Because they can do that too. 
There better be a man that studies and reads his Bible. Who has marked his word? Oh, I'm a marked Bible marker. I got the pens, the pencils, and everything, and rulers and all that. But I can mark the Bible all I want and hurt it. I went to I went to church Sunday morning, and the Lord laid on my heart from the message that the preacher preached. I've got in my in my, in my heart and all that. From many Wednesdays ago, I got a message the preacher had about running out of gas. It's still in my heart. One of the things is, in verse 16, it makes you vain. If you walk out, to church, out of church week after week after week after week, and, you, and that word is proper, and the preacher is proper, and you come out vain because you're not listening. It amazes me the churches I've been in. The preacher is preaching and some women or some people are behind your dirty acting. I've been amazed. I've seen in churches. I've seen during the service. I have watched children play video games on their phones and their, and their tablets and all that. Of course you're not going to get nothing. Where is your heart? Now, granted, there are bad churches out there, but maybe you're not getting nothing because you're the bad one. Your heart's not right. Maybe you need to repent. Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is going forth in fury. A, 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 a tornado. Even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. That's the Antichrist. Remember I told you, watch out for the wicked. And the Antichrist gets a deadly head wound. The anger of the Lord shall not return. In other words, God's not going to ease up. Until he, until he have executed. Interesting word. Until he have performed all performed the thoughts of his heart. You see, there's the heart of God. But we have seen where there's been no heart of God. Where there's been the heart of the man. And again, there are men going into the ministry for their own purpose. I mean, I can go, it's an easy living. I can get a secretary to do it. I can get a deacon to do it. I can get an usher to do it. I can just sit back. I can go online, type up a sermon about trees. Print it out. Yeah, you can do it. And then there could be the, the thoughts of the devil. Deceive them. Lie to them. Get them wrong. Make them think they're okay with God and they're really not. In the latter days ye shall have ye shall consider it perfectly. Latter days is at the end of tribulation. I have not sent these prophets. You know, there's coming a false prophet one day under the Antichrist. I have not sent there's men that speak in the name of God, and God says, I did not send them. Better be forewarned. You better study the scriptures. Because the Bible is the only way to find out. Yet they ran. They preached. They taught. They're in the ministry. They went to a seminary. They're a doctor. They may be a PhD. They may be a scholar. God said, I didn't send them. I'll tell you one perfect person. That God did not send into the ministry. If you got a woman behind a pulpit teach, God did not send her because that is a direct violation of the scripture. Woman is not to accept the authority over a man. Right there, God did not send her. Blame the sin. A 
person gets up saying God's all finished with Israel, God did not send them. We're at 144,000. Uh, uh, which tribe of which tribe are you? Oh, you're not of a tribe. What about 144,000 and one, and 144,000 and two? What do you do where Jesus Christ is God, and the Bible says He is God? What do you do? There, 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 there are 144,000 males, and the female comes to your door, and they're virgins, and they got a child. Well, you know. Let me put down my bicycle and let me tell you about the other testament of Jesus Christ. How come archaeology hasn't found any of the people and places you, you guys mentioned in your book? How come your prophet was killed by husbands in jail for stealing their wives? And the New Testament said, let the husband be of one wife. Catholic Church. Okay, what's it say? The Bible says, call no man your father. The Bible says there's one me between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Mary don't fit it. And then in the churches, you know, the seventh day and all that. We're, we're not under the law. Paul written a complete letter to one of the one of the churches, I forget which one it is, about being under the law. What's the scripture say? Again, you know, we're going to go to Malachi. We're going to talk about tithing. Paul said God loves a cheerful giver. You're not supposed to give of necessary. You're not to be commanded to give. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to him, yet they prophesied. They're speaking and running without God. That happens, there's many in the church age of that. But if they had stood in my counsel, if they were right, and had caused my people, Israel, and Christians, spiritualized, to hear my words, then they should have turned from their evil way. What is a main attribute? What is, how do I know if my church is right? At the preaching of the word, people's lives are changed. They repent. They are sorry for their sin. They go out and do what the Bible says. They tell others. They pray for others. They change their lives. They, they, they cut their hair. They wear proper clothing within time. Give it time. Within time. They attend as much as they can as the job will allow them or sickness and health will allow. They will be there. And they care for others and they help others. And they don't get easily offended. They want to do right. Anybody who is of Satan and Satan's words and Satan's ministry, they want to do what is opposite of God. That's the fruit of Satan. Anyone who's in a ministry for themselves, not Satan, not God, for themselves, the fruit of that ministry is me, myself, and I for the human thing. Do you see? We want to be entertained. We want to have seesaws, and we want to have pies, we want to have ice cream, we want to have entertainment, we want to have the world, we want to have that, 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 and we'll have contests. And we'll teach our kids contests in VBS when we're all supposed to be working together. Show me where we're supposed to have competition in the Christian life. And yet, these, these carnal, fleshy, all right, we got a blue team, we got the red team. 
That sounds kind of political to me. Democrat and Republicans are red and blue. How about not teach the Christians to work together? We're going to have a chili cook-off. Who brings the most people to church? And we got a, we got a prize for the people. Hey, if you open up your church bulletin, and if you got something in it, you come up forward, we'll all clap, and we'll give you a, a, a parting gift. Hey, are you a visitor's church? We got a special thing for visitors in our church. Drop in that, 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 that slip of paper for you to fill out, and put it in the collection plate, and I'm not going to pray for you. I'll say I pray for you, but we're going to count how many visitors we have. You think they're going to pray for you? Come on, come on, come on! Of all the all the visitors they have and all the cards you have, you actually going to pray for each and every? Awfully long list you got. Don't be fooled. When a man lies on a pulpit for one thing, he'll lie about another. And I, I've got one man in mind. Then they shall have turned from their evil way and from the evil of their doing. Proper ministry will have proper results. A devilish ministry will have devilish results. A human ministry will have human results. And we're going to stop right there for tonight.